All right, guys, so as you can see from here, I've generated 384 US dollars uh, and 193 US dollars. And this was done in the past three days. So if I were to add them together, that'd be uh, 384 uh, additional of uh, 193, okay, divided by the past three days, this will be a total of 192 US dollars a day in passive income. Hey everyone, it's Gibber here again. And as you can see from my intro video today, I want to share with you how through my own journey and research on how I've been generating nearly $200 a day passive income through decentralized finance in cryptocurrency. Now, this video is made for beginners like myself. So if you're already an expert in crypto, you can go ahead and skip this video. And if you're new to crypto, I know you may want to skip to the part where I talk about how I generate a passive income immediately. But please watch through the entire video because I will share some important background information about decentralized finance and cryptocurrency so that you have a better understanding before you invest in anything. It is important to always know what you are investing and not just following blindly. Now, once again, I'm not an expert in crypto investing or financial advisor, so please do not take this as a financial advice. I'm personally just posting my own research because this is something I'm seriously interested in and I'm doing so uh, so that you get some ideas or direction and you ultimately have to do your own research put before putting in your own money. Now, I appreciate the early thumbs up for this video for the YouTube algorithm as this will help this channel grow. And as usual, if you're new to this channel, every week I simply post learnings of how I built an eight-figure business, how I hacked my life and body to achieve maximum productivity and what I'm investing now in order to get absolute financial freedom. So if you like any of the topic that I've just described, consider subscribing to this channel. Now, I've said this before in my last few videos that I'm very bullish about cryptocurrency and the power of blockchain technology for the long term. Now, when I mean long term, I mean over 10 years because I know there are a lot of people who trade crypto and they're trying to get maximized gain in the, in the next six months or one year. That's not really what I'm investing for. Now, you also want to keep in mind as of this video, we are in the bull cycle of cryptocurrency. Bitcoin has been up more than 700% in the past 12 months. Ethereum is about 2,000% in the past 12 months and Dogecoin is up 28,000% in just the last 12 months. Everything is going up. But that also means that it could crash any time. And I'm speaking this from experience because I was in the 2017 bull cycle where I invested at the late 2017. And I saw my portfolio increasing by three times to four times within weeks. But unfortunately, it picked up in early 2018. So I was very late and then eventually everything crashed. I held on to all my cryptocurrency and saw it lost 80% of the entire value. But all I did was do nothing for the next three years and I just kept it because I knew I was going to hold for the long term even though the 80% loss was really quite painful back then. Now because I did nothing and just held on to the cryptocurrencies that I was buying, today it has recovered and some of it has even doubled or tripled in value from the last time I bought at the peak. So all I'm saying is that in this bull cycle, everything is hyped and overpriced and is likely to crash again even though I don't think we are at the end of the bull run as of this video. So remember that if you're investing now and cannot stomach seeing your portfolio drop by 80% in weeks, do not invest. If you're trying to maximize your gain in the next three months, six months, that's not investor, that's more like a trader and it's actually an active skill set to become a good trader. Now, I personally don't like to trade because I don't want to look at my charts every single day and look at the price and let it affect my emotion. I'd rather invest in something that I can just um, go to sleep and do nothing for the next five to 10 years. And the reason why I'm so bullish about cryptocurrency the long term is because I really see it replacing fiat money one day. Now, the invention of internet has made information digital, which replaces printed information such as books and photos and so on. Now, blockchain technology has made money digital, which are cryptocurrencies and which will likely replace printed money governed by a central body. And I believe that every new technology will give birth to new industries. For example, the invention of the internet actually created new industries such as social media and e-commerce. You don't have e-commerce and social media without the internet. And blockchain technology has enabled smart contracts which gave birth to a whole new industry called decentralized finance, also known as DeFi. Now, I personally believe that DeFi will disrupt the financial industries, including banking and insurance. I personally like this tweet by CZ of Binance, uh, and he tweeted, banks refusing to work with cryptos are like bookstore refusing to work with the internet. 
I believe banks will one day die just like how retail has been disrupted by e-commerce and banks will be just like a bookstore replaced by e-commerce which is decentralized finance. And one of the reasons why I'm saying that is also because I really hate banks. They are outdated, old school, they lack innovation and just simply complacent. You see, I once had to go back and forth for six months with a bank just to change my address and a bunch of paperwork to fill and then submitting back and forth because something didn't tally and so on and so forth. And since I'm already renting, recently my business banking account with OCBC in Singapore was shut down for no reason at all. They even refused to tell us why. I've told my friends and some people told me that it could be you know, related to money laundering activities or whatsoever, but honestly, we are legit business and certainly we have not done anything related to money laundering. Now, shutting off our account is fine. We just simply move our money to another bank. However, we had a working capital loan that we were paying for to OCBC every month with that bank account that they shut down and now we cannot pay. So we called them and we asked them, how can we pay now? Can we arrange some kind of online payment whatsoever? And they told us that we have to go down to the branch, queue up every month just to pay for the monthly repayment. We even have to clarify, is there any other way to pay online or set up a gyro where we transfer the money every single month so that we don't have to go down. And they say, no, like, come on, this is 2021. COVID-19 cases are still spiking and they want us to re-spreading the virus just to go down to the branch every single month to pay the monthly payment. Outdated and crappy policy. Sorry for renting, but this is the reason why I think bank will eventually die and let's move on. So what is decentralized finance? Decentralized finance is basically finance without a central body. Just like banks, banks are middlemen and they are the central body governing everything that's going on. When you put your money with the bank, the bank actually loan out your money for maybe a 5% interest or 6% interest and then they give you a peanut 0.2% or a 1% for fixed deposit if you're lucky. And they get to keep the rest as profit for providing you a shitty service. Now with decentralized finance, you can basically loan out your cryptocurrency, which is your money, without the middleman like stupid banks, directly to people and it is protected by smart contracts. You get as high as 10% to even 20% for loaning out stable coins like USTD, which are cryptocurrency version of US dollars. So it doesn't go up and down like Bitcoin, it is stable. That's the reason why it's called stable coin. Like seriously, who the hell need banks when you can just put your money and save it in a stable coin that doesn't go up and down so you don't have to worry about the pricing and loan it out for 10 times or even 20 times the interest that the bank is paying you. The more I read about this and study about this, it just doesn't make sense anymore for bank to still exist. Now I know that I've been hating on banks, but finance is a big category and banking and loan is just one of them. A lot of different industries in finance will be disrupted with DeFi, such as insurance and even the way we buy, sell stocks, uh, which is known as the exchanges. I really see DeFi, decentralized finance as the future and have committed to studying and reading up on DeFi 30 minutes a day so I can better position myself in the future on what I want to invest in. Now, I'm a complete beginner when I first began studying to this a few months ago, but one of my superpower is the ability to learn really, really fast. In fact, I believe that anyone can develop this learning superpower and I've done a video on it a few months ago. If you want to watch it, click here. So after reading and watching tons of videos and articles on DeFi, here are three simple ways to generate passive income with decentralized finance. Now, please take note that in this video, I'm not going to cover a step-by-step -step walkthrough uh, so that I don't drag this video longer. I'm simply letting you know the different ways to generate passive income with DeFi to give you an idea so you can do your own research before you invest. And one more warning, before you invest, remember that we are still in a very, very early stage of DeFi. Smart contracts are still new and attackers could find loopholes to exploit and you may lose all your money. Please only invest money you can afford to lose. Now the money I've invested so far are money I can afford to lose and I just take it as even if I lose it, it will just be for research funding and also to educate you. So the first way is through loans, which I've spoken about earlier. Now you can buy stable coins such as USTD, which are cryptocurrencies backed by the value of US dollars and doesn't go up and down like Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other altcoins. And you can generate up to 10, even 18% annually if you use GUSD, which is another type of stable coin. Now the most popular platform to loan out your money is Aave. All you have to do is to go to an exchange, buy some Ethereum, and then transfer the Ethereum into your MetaMask wallet, and then swap it 
for any stable coin and deposit into Aave. Now I know that's a quick summary, but if you want a step-by-step -step walkthrough, there's a lot of videos on YouTube and if you cannot find them, just comment in the comment section. I may do a walkthrough video for you. Now the second way to generate passive income is staking pools. Now without going too much into the technicals, basically blockchain relies on two ways to create new blocks and to validate transactions. The first way is proof of work or mining, which is what Bitcoin is using and uh, this requires a lot of energy. Now the second way is called proof of stake, which is more energy efficient. And you do that by sticking your coin in a staking pool. Now each time a block is created, the miners or stakers are rewarded with more coins. And a staking pool is basically a bunch of people pulling together to stick their coins and then they share the rewards equally. Now I'll put a link in the description for you to read up more on staking if you want to understand how it works. Now with staking pools, you can generate up to 16% annual returns with Bitcoin or 69.48% annual return staking your USTD stable coins with platforms like Pancake Bunny. 69.48%. Now do note that this percentage will decrease as more people start to stake because the same amount of reward will be split by more people. And the reason why all these percentage are so high right now is because DeFi is still in a very early stage. Not many people know about it and of course it comes with a lot of unknown risk. And the third way to generate passive income is called yield farming, also known as liquidity pooling. And this is one of the main highlights of the video because you can generate up to 395% annual returns. So what is yield farming? Yield farming is also sometimes referred to as liquidity mining. Now, it is closely related to a model called automatic market makers. Now, to explain that in simple terms, in traditional finance, let's say you want to buy some Tesla stock. You have to go to an exchange. And in an exchange, if you are buying a Tesla stock, you have to bid for a price and then someone who's willing to sell it will ask for a price. So you basically have a willing buyer, willing seller agreeing on a certain price. Now, if there are not enough buyers or not enough sellers, your stock will become illiquid, which means it cannot be converted into cash immediately. Because if you hold a Tesla stock and nobody is buying or nobody wants to buy, then you cannot convert into cash immediately. Just like property and real estate. The reason why real estate is considered an illiquid asset is because you have to wait and find a buyer who's willing to accept your price. And this process can take weeks or even months. You can't convert your real estate into cash instantly. But in the stock market, you realize that every time you try to buy or sell a stock, the transaction is instant. And this is not because there's always someone ready to buy and someone ready to sell, but this is because there's a middleman called market makers. They are basically a group of middlemen who provides liquidity in the market. So if someone wants to sell their Tesla stocks, they will pay the asking price first and then later sell it to someone who's bidding for it, which is usually higher than the asking price. This is the reason why you have a different bid price and a different ask price, and that's called the spread. And that's what the market makers make by providing liquidity. They will make the spread, excluding other fees that they charge. So why does this matter to you? See, there are more and more decentralized exchanges, also known as DEX, such as PancakeSwap, that uses automatic market maker model, which means that there is no middleman, and when people trade on this platform, they are trading against a liquidity pool provided by people who are willing to deposit into the pool. And the fees and the spread made by the automatic market maker will not go to a market maker, but instead it will be split by the people who have deposited their money into the liquidity pool. So how do you participate in this yield farming? Simply go to a decentralized exchange such as PancakeSwap and then go into farms. And then when you are at farms, you can click on uh, APR, which is the annual return and you can see the different kinds of currency pair that you can deposit your money into. And you can see that some of it, the annual return is as high as 319%. And by the way, these are percentage based on daily return, which means that 391, uh, 319%, you are actually getting a 0.86% a day. So if you choose to compile it manually every single day, you can actually compile it to over 2,300% a year. This amount of return is really insane. So these are the two pairs that I have deposited my money into. Now, uh, I have to deposit XMark, which is uh, altcoin, and BUSD. I have to do it 50-50, which means that if I want to deposit $1,000 of XMark, I also have to deposit $1,000 of BUSD. 
Same for TXL, I have to do a thousand, thousand each. In total, I've deposited 10,000 here and 10,000 here. And please, please do your own research. Don't buy Xmark or buy TXL if you do not believe in it. This is not a video to ask you to buy Xmark or TXL. Uh, and this 10,000 and 10,000 here are money that I can afford to lose, are money that even if I lose it, I don't mind. Uh, and I'm doing it for research purpose, okay? So um, this is the amount of uh, returns or rewards that I get. This is nine point. You will get returns in this thing called Cake, uh, which is another cryptocurrency. And now one Cake is worth $39. So you can exchange it for uh, money anytime. You can just swap it uh, for, a, for a stable coin and just keep the stable coin. Or you can you know send it to an exchange and you can withdraw the money out. So as you can see, 9.8 Cake. Uh, and this is the last three days and 4.9 kick in the last three days. So total 385 US dollars and 194 US dollars. Now this is done in three days. So that is total of about nearly 200 a day in returns. Now I've mentioned that uh, this is 263% or uh, 67% in uh, annual return. And this is daily, which means that if I were to manually compound, that means if I were to harvest this money and add it back in and just compile it every single day, I would get back 1,337% in returns. Uh, now, I'm supposed to do it every single day, but the last three days, I didn't do it because I was uh, having a weekend off, um, you know, I was spending time with my family, so I didn't, uh, I wasn't at my desktop to do uh, the manual compounding and I will be doing this right after this video. Now, do also take note that all this percentage is subjected to fluctuation. It can go up and down uh, every single day uh, because of the liquidity. So what is liquidity? These are the money that we have put together by different people. So the same thing here, if there's more liquidity, it means that uh, more people have to share the same amount of rewards because the reward come from the spread as well as all the different fees that's being collected. And this reward is being split to people who are providing the liquidity. So if I have in, uh, if I have deposited ten thousand here, it means that I own ten thousand over eighteen million dollars, uh, which I don't know how many percent is that. So uh, whatever reward, I'm going to get the percentage of the reward based on how much I have um, stake in the liquidity. Now please take note that when you invest in yield farming, you are also subjected to this thing called the risk of impermanent loss. And for yield farming, you have to hold the altcoins like what I've just shown you. Uh, and these altcoins are not as popular like Bitcoin and Ethereum and it could actually go to zero. So for example, I was showing you TXL and XMARK. These are cryptocurrencies that could go to zero. So that is one of your risks. And because this is still a very early stage of this model, bugs in smart contracts also possible and you could lose your money if attackers are able to exploit this. So again, please don't follow me blindly. Do your own research and invest what you can afford to lose. But all I'm just trying to say is that I'm studying this space very, very closely uh, for the long term. Now, to not drag this video any further, you can read more about yield farming and impermanent loss risk in the description below. So to wrap things up, I believe that DeFi is the future of finance and I'm super excited for the innovation and disruption that it will cause to many different industries because they have been there for centuries and they are getting complacent and no longer adding any value to the marketplace. Innovation and disruptive technology will ultimately make life better for everybody. Imagine being able to generate higher returns with your own money without dealing with shitty banks. And I've just shown you three ways to do it. Imagine buying insurance on decentralized finance without paying your overpriced premium to the central body and getting up so a bunch of stuff that we don't really need. And these are just two examples out of many of what is possible with decentralized finance. I believe anyone who's willing to study this space will reap the rewards in the near future and I hope that you have gained something from this video. Let me know what's your biggest takeaway in the comment section below and let me know if you want me to do a more in-depth walkthrough for videos like loan, staking and yield farming with decentralized finance. So that's all I have for you today. Bye for now.